Hello everybody, my name is David. I'm with RVExplorersGuide.com and today I wanted to bring you out to the trailer. Um, I wrote a pretty extensive blog post about this stall on my 2017 Forest River Wildwood XL. As I mentioned in the blog post, uh, the install was hell, um, but when we finally got it all put together after about nine months of trying, it turns out to be my dream system. So uh, I just want to show you the components uh, that I had installed and how it all fit. And I think we came up with some unique um, solutions to getting everything to fit. And so let's take a look at it. So here, here you'll see um, where we were able to store the batteries. Obviously, the when I had two AGM batteries, they fit in black boxes on the tongue, but when you have four of them, that wasn't going to work. So we found this uh, uh, trailer tray that bolts to the tongue that got my aluminum battery box up above my propane tanks, and all four of them fit perfectly. And I just wanted to let you know that I started out with 20 gallon propane tanks and now I was able, even with that tray, I swapped those out for 30 gallon tanks and they still fit. I wanted to show you how the wires come out of the battery box and get into the trailer. I think the installer did a really, really good job and it looks, um, it's really neat and clean. So here's the box and the propane tanks. And you can see they use some like four inch um, corrugated tubing. And here they sealed it off with the goop at the bottom of the battery box. And then they zip tied it to the battery tray supports. And then it makes its way uh, around. This is how the batteries fit in the box. The box has a locking lid with a key and there's all four of the batteries and they're all wired up. And this thing right here is called a smart dongle uh, for the Victron system that allows you to control the system via Bluetooth. of The battery box and get into the trailer. I think the installer did a really really good job and it looks, um, it's really neat and clean. So here's the box and the propane tanks. And you can see they use some like four inch um, corrugated tubing. And here they sealed it off with the goop at the bottom of the battery box. And then they zip tied it to the battery tray supports. And then it makes its way uh, around the tongue and right there you can see where it comes out of the tube and goes down into the trailer. Here's my Victron 3000 watt inverter charger that fit in the uh, pass-through storage at the front of the trailer and you can see the wires coming up um, to connect the the inverter and uh, this was very convenient that it went off to the side as you can kind of see down through my pass-through storage there. Um, it didn't take up hardly any of my necessary room for other things that I store under here. And uh, the other inverter that I was looking at was manufactured by the Ames company and it was a 4,000 watt inverter that was literally twice as big as the Victron inverter and the Victron inverter weighs about 32 pounds and the Ames inverter weighed about 80. So it was a it was a beast and um, there wasn't just going to be room in here to fit it with everything else I want to store in here. So that's one of the reasons why I went with the Victron. Another reason I went with the Victron is they have a function called power assist. And basically what that allows the inverter to do is, say for example, you're plugged into your generator or to shore power 
and you're not getting enough energy to whatever appliance it is in the trailer that you're trying to operate. When power assist and the inverter kicks on, it'll pull power from the batteries to uh, help the other power source make enough energy to run the appliance. And it only has to do that for a short amount of time, generally. But then once the, um, the, the load is relieved from the other power source, then that source will go back and the inverter automatically takes that extra power and put it back in so it'll charge the battery. Here's a picture of the installation of my MPPT controller. Um, they put it in a cabinet on the top shelf. It doesn't really, uh, we don't miss the space. We can still stack stuff in front of it and it works just fine. Um, this particular controller, I have 850 watts uh, coming from the solar panels. And this um, 150, 60 amp um, controller handles it easily. Here's uh, the Victron battery monitor. It's um, model BMV712. I'll put a link to all these uh, components uh, below the below the video. Um, but this thing is awesome. It basically does everything for a battery monitor that you could possibly. Um, it's showing 100% full right now. That means there's like 240 hours left on the battery charges. It's the current charge on all four batteries, 13.56 volts system right now. The ghost draw of six watts, seven watts on the system. The nice thing about this, and I'll show it, uh, I'll insert it into the video is that this uh, is Bluetooth capable and Victron has what they call their Connect app. And uh, you can do everything to control your batteries from that application. Um, and it even, there are some system settings that are uh, not as easy to get to inside the unit itself. But if you use the app, it's very, very, very simple. Here are my five uh, solar panels. They're 170 watts each, which uh, do the math is 850 watts. And they're pretty dirty right now. It's, uh, we haven't had a, been out on a trip since March, so I'll have to get up here and clean them. Um, but the reason I went with ZAMP is because ZAMP is basically plug and play. Here's the uh, controller for on, on the roof where all the panels plug into. Hey everybody, sorry about the abrupt end of the video, but everything was said that needed to be said about the panel installation on the roof. Um, I am so happy that you uh, made it this far to the end of the video um, and saw my installation. That installation, believe it or not, with all the problems and going back and forth with the installation of the inverter and the batteries and some of the other customizations that we made, um, basically took nine months to get it right. Um, I can't uh, emphasize enough that if you purchase a Victron system, that it is not a typical solar install uh, job. Um, I highly recommend that you find uh, call Battleborn Batteries, who I bought the system from, and uh, get them to uh, identify a Victron installer in your area and rely on them to do this. Uh, this install probably should have taken, you know, two or three weeks. Um, from beginning to end and been done with it, uh, nine months was just way, 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 way. It was so frustrating. Um, but now that it's all done uh, and all the tweaks have been made, it really is my dream system. Um, we are camping, boondocking in state parks now 
um, and not starting the generator at all. And we barely ever go below 75% on the batteries. And on the next sunny morning by 11 a.m. or noon, the batteries are already back fully charged 100% again. So I can't ask for more than that. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please hit a like on it. And uh, if you would like to hear more about my um, adventures in the RV, the purpose of my uh, videos and my blog is to talk about RV customizations, you know, like solar installations, for example, and then I'll be doing reviews on um, RV accessories that make RVing uh, more enjoyable and more fun. And then I'll talk about, we're mostly in uh, the state of California and Arizona. I'll talk about some of the places that we've, our destinations, and give reviews and insights about the places that we've been. Um, we stay at a lot of the mostly completely at the California State Park system um, and some BLM and Forest Service land in Northern California and in Arizona. Um, so if you'd like to hear more about any of that, please hit subscribe and we'll see you in the future. Thanks so much for listening. Bye now.